This is the Al Sensei English Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Al Sensei English 2.0 podcast where I help you express yourself more naturally and more smoothly. This is episode number five. So we've got a great topic for you today. Um, how to become a more natural speaker. I'll give you three ideas to help you achieve that. Followed again by our uh, weekly pronunciation point. So there's a lot to, to talk about today, so let's get right to it. Um, the main, main topic today, let's, let's go ahead. Alright, so for today's uh, main topic, we're going to talk about three things, three keys for becoming a natural speaker. So, let's begin. Number one, to become a natural speaker, uh, the first thing you need is natural expressions. So what do I mean by natural expressions? Well, it's very simple. Just ask yourself the question, what do native speakers really say? When you're walking on the street, what do people actually say to each other? And so, you know, uh, how do we know if what you're learning in the textbook uh, is actually used in real life? Well, of course, a lot of it is, uh, but how do we know that? So let me give you uh, one very clear example, and I, I use this example a lot, but uh, it's, I think it's very uh, easy to understand. Uh, a lot when I ask students for a suggestion, for example, like uh, I have some free time, I would like to you know do some sightseeing in Tokyo. What should I do? And a lot of students will say, "Oh, you had better go to Tokyo Tower." Okay, so. Is it correct grammar? Well, of course it's correct grammar, but do native speakers actually say that to each other? Mm, I would guess not. Probably not. Uh, in fact, I would say that it's probably a 0% chance in this situation. And the reason is because you had better, is a, it's a bit strong. It's for more strong advice and even in a, you know, to give a warning. So. Uh, just so you know, a, a better natural phrase in this case would be, for example, you might want to visit Tokyo Tower, or why don't you go to Tokyo Tower? So those would be more natural, everyday expressions. Um, so, you know, something you learn in the textbook may or may not be, you know, natural, uh, natural expression. Or, you know, there might be natural expressions that are not even in the textbook. And I can give you an example from my experience um, of studying Japanese. You know, I studied Japanese for eight years in school in America and I had lots of textbooks. I had three or four different teachers and professors. In eight years, never one time I, did I ever learn the phrase Otsukaresama deshita. Now, it's, it's a natural everyday expression in Japanese. Eight years, I never learned that. So, you know, there are a lot of things out there in, in, uh, in English like that. So here's your action step. Listen carefully and note what native speakers are saying. Alright, the second thing you need to become a more natural speaker is pronunciation and intonation. Pronunciation of course is how we say or produce the, act the uh, sounds of the language. Intonation is more of the tone and the flow of the overall uh, language or the sentences. So let's start with pronunciation. So, of course, pronunciation is very important uh, for communication. So, um, for example, you know, can you clearly say glass or grass? Can you clearly differentiate L and R? Can you say that very clearly? Uh, can you clearly say the V sound, for example, video or DVD? Uh, so th those are just two examples, the uh, TH sound, for example. So being able to say those sounds correctly and smoothly uh, will make you a more natural speaker and more effective communicator. 
the other thing about pronunciation is it just it raises your credibility. Cre what is credibility? Credibility is how people see you and view you and trust you. So if you have you know high credibility, people will believe you and you know have a better feeling about you, get a better impression about you. And that's very important. And pronunciation is very important to achieve a high level of credibility. So focus on pronunciation, intonation uh, as well. So once you get you know, more of the feel of English, you know how native speakers sound. Uh, it's it's actually not so hard to do uh, once you just once you start getting into it. But I would recommend first focusing on pronunciation. The action step of course is to watch the English 2.0 podcast and especially the pronunciation points and practice 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 build those mouth and tongue muscles so that you can just you know, very easily and simply confidently pronounce English all right the third thing you need to become a more natural speaker is fluency so what does fluency mean well my definition of fluency is expressing your ideas very smoothly. Very simple. Okay, the definition is simple, but I know it sounds maybe like a challenging thing to do. Well, actually, it's very achievable if you just uh, keep you know a couple things in mind, and in fact, if you open your mind to some new concepts and maybe new ideas, uh, it's very achievable actually. So the first thing we need to consider uh, about fluency is the concept of expressing ideas and pictures rather than words. Now the reason this is important is because, you know, as humans we tend to think in pictures. We don't think in words. If I say the word elephant, you probably have a picture of an elephant in your mind. You don't have the word elephant written in English in your mind. So that's one of the reasons it's very important to get out of the mindset of okay, what, how do I say Otsukari sama deshita? Well, it's it's a losing game because the culture is different, and that's the other key point. Is you know, and across different languages and different cultures, well, the culture is different, so the words don't always match the image of what we're trying to say. The next thing, number two, is. Uh, thinking in English. All right, now I know we've heard that before and it sounds very tough, uh, but let me give you uh, just an easy example, okay, of so how to think in English. Thinking in English is based on the idea of, you know, coming directly from your feeling. Okay? What do you want to say? Why are you talking? What is the purpose of your communication? Okay, so one example is I'll go back to the earlier example, is making a suggestion, okay? And so, for example, if somebody asks you for advice, okay, or somebody asks you for a recommendation, you'll get the feeling automatically in your heart, I want to, you know, give a suggestion, okay? I want to share my idea because I think it can help someone. Okay? When you get that feeling, it's not any language, it's a feeling inside you. Yeah? So instead of going to the Japanese word directly, we go to the English directly, okay? And when you can do this, that means you're thinking in English. Okay, and the third point to go over for fluency is the idea of confidence. All right, now, how do we build confidence? Confidence is, well, confidence is based on repetition. Repetition means repeating again and again and again basically practicing again and again and again. When you do something many times, you build experience. When you get experience, you have confidence. It's very simple. But it just takes that time and commitment to practice again and again and repeat that exercise. So confidence uh, is very important. When you have confidence, that causes you to be a very powerful and very fluent speaker. So your action step for fluency is practice speaking. Uh, it could be a dialogue from your textbook or uh, an article, but practice speaking it out loud 
and focus on smooth, okay? And practice until you can say it very smoothly. If you feel like you have to stop and start, keep going, just continue. And focus on smooth. And you know, don't, don't focus on speed, focus on just spitting it out of your mouth very smoothly. And practice that again and again and again. If you find a tough spot uh, for you, maybe it's a hard thing to pronounce or a hard thing to say, keep going until you can say it smoothly. Practice again and again. So that's your action step. And so to review, the three key things you need to become a more natural speaker. Number one is natural expressions. Number two, pronunciation and intonation. And number three, fluency. Get those three things and you will become a more natural speaker in no time. All right, in today's pronunciation point, we're going to talk about how to produce the S-I sound or S-E sound as compared to the S-H-I. So, in, for example, in words like sip and ship. So, ship, of course, is fune, and the sip is to take a little drink of something. So, we'll talk about how to produce that sound. Now, of course, this sound doesn't naturally exist in uh, Japanese, so it's, that's a tough one for students to produce. Uh, but really, uh, the idea behind it is as simple as producing the other S sounds. Uh, you know, for example, sa, su, se, so. Uh, so really, if you now think about your mouth movement, uh, basically to make a sa sound, S, regular S sound, Okay, so your tongue is kind of positioned right behind your front teeth and you're blowing air between your tongue and the top of your mouth. Okay, coming out. Which you produce sa, for example, or se, or so. That sound. Okay, now when you pronounce she, if you, you know, really analyze it now, your teeth are closed together and you're basically blowing out air between your teeth. She, she, sh, she. So, it's a different sound, s and sh. Different uh, feeling. So basically all we want to do is combine the regular s sound and the i or e sound. So let's practice uh, how to do that. First, let's take a word, for example, ship. Okay, so please repeat. Ship. Ship. Okay, this sh shouldn't be so hard. Now if we take, just take the S away, basically we're not closing our mouth, we'll keep it open. Just focus now on your tongue behind your front teeth and just blow air and say sip sip okay ship sip okay it should hopefully feel natural feel uh, comfortable to say let's try another example sheet sheet okay for example one sheet of paper okay or isu which is seat seat okay now when you say seat well, again, focus on your tongue behind your teeth and just blow. Seat. Your, your teeth should not be, you know, closed together. Should just be very. Uh, your teeth should be. That, that should not be the focus. Your focus should be on the tongue behind your teeth and just blowing air. Seat. Okay. So one more time. Sheet. Now the teeth are closed. Sheet and seat. Okay, so let's do an example sentence. Very simple. I like to sit. Okay. One more time. I like to sit. I like to sit on a ship. One more time. I like to sit on a ship.
great. Just some example sentences uh, to practice with, so please practice those. If you, you know, have your own, that's great too. So basically that's the easy explanation on how to pronounce the S-I sound uh, without the H. So give that a try and good luck. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. Uh, if you would like more information on how to become a more natural speaker and more personalized tips, please email me at ask at alsensei.com or tweet me at alsensei and you can get a free 20 minute Skype counseling session and this is the first time I'm offering this so please take advantage of that if you would like to know how to become a more natural speaker in your particular case it's a free 20 minute Skype counseling session all right, so thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Please.